Fallacies of defective induction. Fallacies of a defective induction occur when a conclusion of an argument is supported by weak or unreliable evidence. In this video, I will explain four different fallacies of defective induction. These include the argument from ignorance, the appeal to inappropriate authority, false cause, and hasty generalization. The argument from ignorance. This is where a conclusion is supported by the fact that it has not been proven false or proven true. Here are some examples. God must exist because he has not been proven to not exist. Of course GMOs are harmful. They haven't been proven to not be harmful. Tides come in, tides go out. You can't explain that. Therefore, God must be responsible for this phenomenon. The problem with this argument is that it uses ignorance to justify a conclusion. But you can't use ignorance to justify a conclusion. You need, you need to give evidence or reasons to justify the claim. You can't appeal to ignorance. So this is a fallacious argument. The appeal to inappropriate authority. This is where a conclusion is supported by an irrelevant or unreliable authority. Here are some examples. Ben Shapiro says the U.S. can't afford universal health care. Therefore, it must be true. Richard Dawkins says there are no objective moral values if God doesn't exist. Therefore, that must be the case. Ben Carson says evolution is false. Therefore, God must have created all, true, all life in its present form. The problem with this argument is that you can't justify a conclusion by an appeal to authority, usually. You need to give evidence or reasons to justify the belief that you're trying to support. And the authority figure is not the truth maker of the claim you're trying to support. So this is a fallacious argument and it should be avoided if one wishes to be rational. False cause. This is when we infer that one event caused another when it did not. Here are some examples. Gas prices have been rising ever since Trump took office. That must be his fault. A child in France died because his parents put him on a vegan diet. Therefore, the vegan diet must have killed him. My Xbox stopped working after my brother played it. Therefore, he must have broke it when he played it. The problem with these arguments is it illegitimately says one thing caused another when in fact it did not. When you're trying to support a causal relationship between two things, you have to appeal to evidence or reasons. You can't appeal to... Uh, things that did not in fact cause the thing in question to happen. And the last one is hasty generalization. This is where a conclusion is supported on anecdotal or an otherwise unreliable sample size. Here's some examples. My black friend Charles can't swim that well. I guess all black people can't swim. I've met a few guys that were in a fraternity and they were jerks. Indeed, I suspect that all guys that are in a fraternity are jerks. I went to a laundromat the other day, and the person loading clothes in the washing machine next to me smelled bad. I won't be going back there, because I don't want to be around a bunch of smelly people. The problem with this argument is that it uses anecdotes or a small sample size to justify a conclusion. But again, you need evidence or reasons to justify conclusions. You can't appeal to, uh, <laughs> you can't appeal to bad reasons like this to justify the conclusion. You'll notice that hasty generalizations are um, the reason all, most stereotypes exist, or at least many stereotypes exist. Uh, and recognizing this can help us avoid developing prejudiced attitudes against other people or things in general. So this is, uh, out of all the fallacies presented here, this one is probably the most usual, um, useful for everyday life. That concludes my explanation of fallacies of defective induction. In the next video, I will explain fallacies of presumption.